Hi, so today I want to talk a little bit about rice and liquid damage, and I just want to give you an idea of why rice is the stupidest fucking thing that you can do to your phone or to your laptop if you get liquid on it. I want to use the microscope here. So here is a machine that got water damaged and somebody decided to put rice on it. So they didn't even open the machine to put rice on the board. I'm not saying that that would make it better. That would not make it better. It would still be fucked up, but let me just show you what this looks like. So, yeah, this all right, so this here is a co bunch of corrosion and fucked up shit. And all that part that looks really nasty and corroded and fucked up, that part is, is caused by the liquid. Now, this is the rice grain, right? What the fuck is this going to do to clean that? Like, how in God's name do you think that by putting this rice grain somewhere near the computer that it'll fix it? Like, let's take the rice. Let's move it. Like, is it doing anything? No, it's still fucked. Is the rice doing anything? No, it's still fucked. Look. Oh, look, I'm putting the rice on the green. Is it doing... No, it's still fucked up. If you want to actually fix this, and I'm, again, I'm not even saying that this is what's going to fix it, but if you take... Uh, if you Firstly, you unplug the battery to prevent the spread of this junk, but if you take a Q-tip with alcohol and you actually move it around like this, see? It's getting rid of the junk, but the rice does nothing. So over here, again, we got some more of this shit. So the rice didn't even make it all the way over there. So you have a rice grain over here. So we've already established that when you take a piece of rice and you take that piece of rice and you put it near the water that it does absolutely nothing. This is fucking useless. This is food. This is not an electronics repair material. This is food. This is not fixing. But even if this was fixing, even if this grain of rice had the magical power to repair that component, how do you expect the rice to do that when the rice is sitting on the corner of the computer because you haven't even opened the computer to apply the rice? Again, I'm not trying to say that you will fix this machine by putting rice in it. You will never fix it by putting rice anywhere. But when the rice is over here, how do you even expect it to do anything? Again, it's not. You do this. This is what's going to fix that shit. And again, as you can see, the Q-tip isn't even really doing a good job because it doesn't get anywhere, which is why we're going to go over the proper thing to do when you have this issue. The proper thing to do is to actually remove the motherboard from the computer and then put it into an ultrasonic cleaner. So you saw what it looked like with the rice. Then you saw what it looked like with the Q-tip and the alcohol. And now, in a few minutes, you're going to see what it looks like after going through an ultrasonic cleaner and then coming out of an ultrasonic cleaner. And hopefully after this, you'll start to realize that this entire thing of rice is just a bullshit internet myth that has no place in, just no place in the world. Rice is food. Rice is not for electronics repair. Rice is not for liquid damage. When somebody says that, oh, my device was broken and I put it in rice and two days later it worked, it, had, it probably had that corrosion on it and it probably had that corrosion in an area that wasn't important. The rice didn't do anything. That device was meant to work again in two days whether or not the rice was in there. The same way that this machine that has corrosion on the PP3V42 circuit is not going to have PP3V42 whether there's no rice or five pounds of rice. Because as I demonstrated, rice does absolutely nothing to clean a motherboard. So once I take this out, I'm going to put it into my ultrasonic cleaner. It's a Crest CP500D. I'm going to have one gallon of distilled water in there mixed in with 100 milliliters of Branson EC fluid. I'm going to put the machine through the cleaner. After I put it through the cleaner, I'm going to let it sit in an alcohol bath of 99% alcohol. So the cleaner has distilled water, and the distilled water is combined with a cleaning agent. Now, after that, I want to get rid of the water, so I put it in alcohol, because alcohol, not only does alcohol naturally displace water, but alcohol also evaporates really, really quickly. Now, with the alcohol evaporating quickly, that's going to make it easier for me to dry the board off. After that, I'm going to be putting it into an air filter for about 10 or 20 minutes, and that's going to get rid of a lot of the, the, the large drops of alcohol or liquid. And after all that's done, I'm going to take the board and I'm going to put it in the oven, not to reflow. Again, that's, a, that's another big bullshit internet myth about how you, know, you, you have to heat up the solder balls on the board. No, I put it in the oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That is not a temperature that melts solder. That's simply above the boiling temperature so that I can ensure that when I take the board out of the oven that there was no alcohol and no water resting under any of these chips. So after I've put it through that cleaning process and I've gotten all the junk off using liquid, now I'm going to... Um, so let it sit in an oven just above the boiling water temperature to make sure that I don't have any liquid sitting under these chips. And that's about that. 
So I'm just about done getting the motherboard out of the computer. And again, this, this is why everybody likes the Rice Smith. You don't have to do any work. You don't have to buy a $5 screwdriver. You don't have to sit here for 10 or 15 minutes actually taking apart the device that you fucked up so that you can fix it. No, you just throw it in rice and it'll work again. No, if you fuck something up and that's something that you fucked up is 600 or 800 or 1200 or $2,000, you have to get tools. You have to spend $5 on tweezers, $5 on a screwdriver, and actually sit here for 20 minutes out of respect to your iPhone or your Android phone or your BlackBerry or your laptop or whatever it is that you fucked up out of respect to that device, you have to sit there, take it apart, properly clean it, properly dry it, and then put it back together because that is what the device deserves. Because the device did not ask for liquid to be spilled on it. The device did not ask to have 12 volts going to its 3 volt rail while the battery was plugged in because you spilled beer on it because you were high or wasted or being an idiot. No, the device didn't ask for that. So out of respect for the device, don't put rice in it, fix it properly. So here we're going to move over to the ultrasonic cleaner. Again, the office here is still a bit of a mess. I just came back from teaching the practical board repair thing, and I have, I actually, I got back here at like 9 or 10 o'clock, and I haven't had time to actually do anything in terms of cleaning. So it's a mess. So this is going to be my ultrasonic cleaner over here. This is the Crest CP500D. I'm going to turn it on. It's probably still hot from where I was using it before. So let's see. So on the front, the temperature over here says... Yeah, it says that it's at 64, which is pretty hot. We're just going to have the heater on over there. All right, let's move it so you can see it. So I'm going to take the motherboard, and I'm going to dump it in the cleaner and hit ultrasonic. So we're going to leave it there for about two minutes, and I'm going to turn the board over to the other side. All right, so now I'm going to take this board out of the ultrasonic cleaner, and I'm going to dump it into that vat of alcohol that sits right behind it. So we're done with the ultrasonicking. I'm going to move this back into place. This here is a bin of 99% alcohol. I'm going to grab the board by the screw hole and place it gently into the alcohol bin. Now I'm just going to move the board around, just swish, swoosh, swish, swoosh. Don't bang it really hard against anything, just gently swish and swoosh. And you could see that the temperature that I was cleaning at was about 65, 66 Celsius. I'm going to touch this alcohol mess, which I really probably shouldn't be doing. Unless I want to mutate into something. All right, so I'm going to let it sit right here by the air filter just to get rid of the excess liquid for a few minutes. That's boring, so I'm probably going to fast forward past that. And after it sits in there for a few minutes, I'm going to let it sit into the, in the oven at 250 Fahrenheit until all the liquid has evaporated away. All right, so we're back. So the board went through the ultrasonic cleaner. It went through the alcohol bath. It got to dry off in the air filter for about 10 minutes. And then I left it in this oven here at 250 Fahrenheit for about a full half hour. And what I want to do here is I want to show you what it looks like after all of that is done so that you can get a little bit of an idea. So you can go back in the video to see what it looked like before the ultrasonic cleaning. Now I want you to see what this looks like after the ultrasonic cleaning. So I'm going to show you that very same area that looked really, really messed up before. 
So this is the area that had all that green crap all over it before. And look at what it looks like now. So let's get this thing focused nicely so that you can see. Look at it. It is not perfect. It is not 100% perfect, but this is a lot better than before. This systematically got rid of every single little piece of corrosion. Now, if you really, really wanted to, you could replace this capacitor, but even then, all you kind of have to do is scratch away the oxidation. The capacitor itself has a really good chance of not actually having been damaged by this at all. Uh, this probe point over here has been destroyed, but that is just a measurement point that's not actually used for anything. So there is nothing here of use. And let's go over the other area. So right by the backlight fuse, you had some corrosion. So this had a bunch of green stuff on it. And above here, you had a bunch of green stuff on it. And what you could see now is that after the ultrasonic cleaning process, all of that junk has been removed. So what the rice did, the rice did absolutely nothing. Not only was the rice not even making its way to the portions that had to get cleaned. So the rice wasn't even getting to the part that had to get cleaned. But after I take the rice and I place it on there, it does absolutely nothing. That corrosion is spreading and spreading and spreading. And the only way that you're going to get that stuff off is by brushing it, by cleaning it manually, or the best way to do it, again, you saw what it was like when I was using the Q-tip. I was getting a little bit of it off, but there was a good portion of it that was staying on the board because it wasn't getting into every crevice. When I use the ultrasonic clean, Cleaner, not a jewelry cleaner. When I use a proper ultrasonic cleaner, it gets rid of everything. And I put it in the alcohol bath and then I put it in the oven and it looks really, really good. Now let's see if this works when I try to turn it on. So before the problem with this system was that it was completely 100% dead. This machine did not work at all. It was a non-functioning laptop. It did nothing. Now, when I plug it in, you can see that the fan is spinning on this laptop. And what you'll see after a few attempts at booting, because with this machine, if you take everything apart and put it back together, the 2013 Haswell MacBook Airs, the fan spins, it goes off, goes on, goes off, goes on, goes off, and then it finally goes on again. What you're going to see is that the screen is going to turn on and it's going to try to boot because it's a fully functioning computer. So while the rice did absolutely nothing other than make a mess on my floor, proper cleaning got the machine from being completely dead and nasty looking to actually working. And again, I'm not making any of this up. I'm opening the machine as I see the machine. I'm taking this lid off and then picking it directly under the microscope before I even clean the rice. You get to see what it looks like with the rice in there. You get to see all the green shit. And then you get to see what it looks like after a proper cleaning. And the thing is, I understand that you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. I understand. Lewis, I have a $500 phone. I'm not going to spend $900 on an ultrasonic cleaner to try to fix my $500 phone. I get what you're saying. That makes sense to me. But what you could do is you could get alcohol on a toothbrush from the corner store for 5 bucks. And again, I'm not saying that alcohol on a toothbrush is the ideal way to do this. I'm not saying that alcohol and a toothbrush is the best and proper way to do liquid damage repair, but if you get alcohol on a toothbrush, at the very least, you've put effort in, and at the very least, you're actually brushing off the dirt instead of saying, I'm going to put rice next to the dirt and hope that that fixes it. Can you imagine if we as human beings wiped our ass the same way that we did liquid damage repair? Can you imagine if it, instead of taking toilet paper and a cleaning agent and water and applying it to our ass and cleaning, imagine if we just said, you know what, I just took a shit, and there's a bunch of moisture in there. I'm just going to put some rice in my boxer shorts. Can you imagine if you did that, how less often you would get dates, how less often people would stand next to you because it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. If you wiped your ass the same way that you people with the rice were cleaning your computers and your phones, yeah, no, nobody would talk to you for obvious reasons. So again, what I want to instill in you with this video is some type of basic skepticism. If you have just a basic skepticism of what people tell you, you're set. Because again, one of the biggest problems with the internet and one of the very few things that my mother and I had ever agreed on in life is that there's a lot of wrong information on the internet. And a big problem with people, not with the internet. See, she thought the problem was with the internet. I know the problem is with people is that they believe what's on the internet just because it's on the internet. So if you read something that's really, really, really dumb and you think to yourself, that sounds really fucking dumb. Instead of saying, well, that sounds really dumb, but I'm going to listen to it because it's what I read on the internet. What you should do is you should Google that concept that you read about on the internet and check out the first 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 results and spend 10 or 15 minutes really reading through it. Because while there's a lot of bad information on the internet, one of the really nice things about the internet is that all the people who know that there's bad information on the internet are there on the internet to tell you that it's bad information. And I'm one of them. And the same thing goes with my channel. There are a lot of things that I say where I just, I know that I'm right. But even if you think 
that I'm right and I know that I'm right, I still want you to have a healthy skepticism just because. I still want you to have a healthy skepticism and say, Lewis said this, but let's see if that's really true. Let me do a little bit of my own independent research. Let me look this up and see if he actually knows what he's talking about. Because if you do that, you'll be well-rounded and you'll have a great knowledge base and you'll be well in life. But if you if you take your $1,200 or your $2,000 device and shove it in rice and think that that's going to fix it because of what the internet told you, you're probably going to do that in a lot of other areas of your life. There's a lot of other areas of your life where you may just be an idiot and throw some, you know, and, and do something really stupid with something really expensive blindly just because somebody said that on the internet. And I know that I, I've, I've fell for that in the past, and there are times where I've done that and bad things happen, and I honestly kind of deserve them because I was missing out on that healthy skepticism where I say, I'm not going to listen to what some jackass that I don't know tells me just because it's in print on my computer screen. And you shouldn't do it with rice either. Rice is not an electronics cleaning material or tool. 